Good morning. Happy first day of fall. I think you're all probably very hot in here as I am, so hopefully the weather is going to follow soon. My name is Kim Clifton, and I'm the executive director of HALOS. I'd like to welcome Governor McMaster, the South Carolina Department of Social Services Director Mike Leach, Senator Katrina Sheely, Representative Ray Felder, and members of the Joint Citizen and Legislative Committee on Children. We're honored to participate in the signing of this bill that expands kinship licensing to include fictive kin. Does anybody know what fictive kin are? Okay, it's a lot of jargon. So it means, and some of you may fall into this category, it means those caregivers, those kinship caregivers who step in who are not biologically related to the children. We've seen, and many of you again may fall into this category, family friends step in, we've seen church members, we've served through halos, we've seen um, godparents. So any caregiver who steps in before DSS involvement or before licensing that is not a direct biological relative of the child. So this will expand that definition so that fictive kin may also get licensed as kinship foster parents along with biological relatives who are kinship caregivers. So we're really excited about this. Um, we're excited that it also acknowledges that there are people who are not biologically related to the children who are stepping in, who are known to the child or the family, who are making sacrifices to step in and raise children on their own. HALOS has provided services to kinship families since 2007. We're the first organization in South Carolina specifically to address the needs of, of families like yourselves um, who have taken in children to raise outside of the foster care system. We continue to learn from all of your efforts. We learn from you every day. Our program has been built upon everything that we've learned from kinship caregivers in the last 15 years in our programs, and I'm looking from Ms. Dolores and Annie and Iona, people who, um, Ms. Virgie, who've been involved for years and have really shaped the development of our programs. We provide kinship navigation. So many of you, I think um, all of you, have probably been through our kinship navigation service and we connect caregivers to resources and benefits that exist to help you um, access the services that you need. We have a more intensive case management program. I should probably ask if you would turn off your phones. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> Sorry. Um, we provide educational opportunities. We provide legal assistance in collaboration with Charleston uh, Legal Assistance. Last year, we served 314 new families and over 500 families in total. But we know that with 69,000 children living in kinship care in South Carolina, we're only meeting about 10% of the need in the Tri-County area. So there are a lot more people like you who are raising children um, outside of the DSS system or foster care system who need services. And I'm really happy that um, I can... I guess I can share today. Um, Director Leach is here and he has done so much. I've, I've been working with kinship caregivers now for 15 years and since 2019 when Director Leach arrived, I can't tell you how much movement there has been where it felt like not a lot of movement in acknowledging the sacrifices that kinship caregivers make. Since Director Leach has been here, I can honestly say um, there are programs now to fund community-based organizations like HALOS throughout the state to provide services to kinship caregivers. There's recognition that you're stepping up every day. Um, there's transparency around what needs are still um, exist for kinship families like yourselves. And uh, Director Leach was just responsible. I, I say he was responsible. Maybe there were other people, but um, yeah, for to me it was Director Leach, but he was able to secure over three million dollars from the state legislature to provide funding for community-based efforts throughout the state, like Halos, um, because right now Halos is really the only program operating at this level. Um, but there'll be programs like Halos throughout the state that can help meet the needs of caregivers in their areas. So it's really, really exciting, and I'll, I'll be honest, I'm, I've told them this a hundred times, but there are many times when I've thought said, I didn't think this would happen. Um, and it's, it's incredibly exciting. This legislation is exciting. Um, the work that the state is doing to uh, help kinship caregivers and acknowledge your sacrifices is really exciting, and um, we are proud to work with them in collaboration on this. I get now to introduce Ms. Virgie Anderson. Um, Ms. Virgie, who we, as we call her, has worked with HALO since 2015. She's raising her grandson. 
she was part of um, a participatory qualitative evaluation of our navigation program that we um, conducted in 2020. Virgie and three other caregivers were um, trained to conduct an evaluation. They conducted interviews of other caregivers, analyzed data, and I'm happy to say the result of that was that we can now say with um, full full knowledge, full <laughs> the statistical backing, that um, our kinship navigation program provides access, helps caregivers access um, services that meet their basic needs. So we're really proud of that. So I will introduce Virgie. Thank you, Tim. Oh, okay. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Governor McMaster. I would like to thank DSS and Hellos for the awesome job that they do. Uh, caregivers are special people and it's not, it's not easy. It's not easy being a caregiver. Uh, some caregivers are family and some, like Kim said, are fictive kins, um, caregivers, you know, unrelated. Most caregivers are moved by their hearts. When we see children going through so many things, I mean awful <laughs> things, more than their little hearts can take, you know, our hearts just go out to them. We have to do something to help these little children. Uh, and there are, you know, so many needs, uh, financial needs. Uh, caregivers need me time also. You know, when we are taking care of children and we are running about taking them to um, uh, after school programs, taking them to the doctor, and we just forget about our, ourselves and we just want to do for those little children. Because I know when I was taking care of five children, my husband and myself, we retired. We moved from New Haven, Connecticut to Charleston, which this is my home. And five children with a small house, and we had to make room for those children. And, you know, I was just running back and forth, back and forth, doing things for them. And it was really hard for me. And I just thank God for, um, we have here, uh, care groups, and I could never make those care groups because I was too busy. But when you get all stressed out, you know, you just make the time, you know, to get that help for yourself. So I just thank God, you know, for a program like this, Hellos, that they are here to help caregivers because, because we really need that help. We need that. We need someone to look out for us. But, uh, yeah, I remember the time, you know, when I had the children. Like I said, it was so hard for me running back and forth. You know, my husband, he got sick and he got paralyzed. He couldn't help me anymore. And it was really hard. But when I would come to care group, and I would hear the stories of other people that was worse off than me, than what I was going through. But it just helped me, and it encouraged me, you know, to um, see that there was other people that can speak to me and tell me their story. You know, I was just sitting next to someone today, and they were telling me their story. I said, my God, how did you do it? Because I, I didn't know how I did it with the help of God and the help of Hellos right there, you know, helping me every step of the way. And like I said, there were lots of needs for the children. They were going through so much. They, they needed financial help and there were mental problems. So there's, there's so many needs that we have. So I'm glad for today, you know, that um, we have this gathering today. But all is not bad because, you know, it's just a blessing when you see your story changes and you watch the kids, uh, how they just blossoms and now they're doing so well. 
And the biggest story is when they can get back with the families, you know, and when the family could get together. And I, you know, my story is good because the family got together, even though I have one still in the house that need extra help. But the other kids, you know, they went back and they're doing fine. They, I mean, I'm so grateful just to see them, how they're blossoming and the families, um, the, the mother and the father, they get together and the kids are so happy now. You can see the smiles on their face now. But someone have to, you know, go through something. Someone have to care. That's why we are caregivers. And you are special people. If you're a caregiver, you are special. You need a hand clap. You need a hug. Because you are special. So I just thank you, you know, thank um, Kim for giving me um, this spot to say something concerning caregivers today. Wow. Oh, my goodness. What a, what a great start. Thank you, Kim and, and Miss Anderson. Um, uh, good morning, Governor. Uh, I'm Michael Leach, State Director of the Department of Social Services here in South Carolina. It's great to be here in North Charleston with uh, Halos and to see so many kinship caregivers and supporters of kinship care gathered here today, especially with September being Kinship Care Month um, to raise awareness uh, about kinship care. Thank you to our legislative leaders who are here today, including Senator Katrina Sheely and Representative Ray Felder. I also see Amanda Whittle, Child State Advocate and Director of the Children's Advocacy, um, and Dr. Kay Phillips from the Dorchester Children's Advocacy Center. And hello to all the families and caregivers here today. Um, it's, it's special to have you guys here. Um, and it's special to have um, interacted with some of you over the last couple years and, and heard your voice. Iona, <laughs> thank you, right? Um, uh, you are the ones that step up and answer the call to care for children and youth in, in your lives um, when they need help the most. Let's give, I wanna, we're gonna do another round of applause, right? <laughs> we need to celebrate and, and bring awareness to, to this and, and, um, and the signing of, of, of the expansion of, of this work in our state. Research confirms that children do best in kinship foster care or kinship care and that the family connections are critical to healthy development, minimize trauma, and strengthen a sense of belonging. It also preserves children cultural identity and relationships to their community. We, we have to keep making sure that they're connected. Today's legislation strengthens the definition of kinship care by adding the definition fictive kin to our state law. It is used to describe a non-relative caregiver, such as a coach, teacher, neighbor, family, friend. Through my time leading DSS, our state has seen several key changes to kinship care, including an increased number of kinship caregivers, as well as a piece of legislation being signed today. I want to thank Governor McMaster and the members of the General Assembly for their financial investment in the agency with additional resources that will improve how children, youth, and families are served in this state. One of the ways the state is increasing support for kinship caregivers is through funding for an expanded kinship care navigator program. And, and Kim mentioned me, but this is, this is a lot of people putting things together, including the General Assembly having faith in our work and the caregivers across the state so that we can provide that support to, to our caregivers because this work is hard. This partnership seeks to develop the capacity to implement a statewide kinship navigator program by assessing internal capacities and exploring partnerships. It formalizes a model that can provide advocacy and case management and include referring kinship caregivers to the appropriate resources and have the appropriate supports. As we celebrate today, we know that the work is far from over and there are so many more changes needed to move our child and health and well-being system forward in our state. The next hurdle that needs to be cleared is bringing a statute change that would allow guardianship arrangement where a kinship caregiver could receive a monthly payment much like an adoption subsidy um, post adoption. So it's called a kin gap program. And it would be additional permanency option for children. And this program is intended to enhance family preservation and stability outside of systems. 
and by providing relatives with an alternative route to permanency and reunification and, and additional funding. And we are going to uh, work with hopefully our General Assembly members this year to, to work towards that goal. There's more to be done, y'all. This is just one step. Currently, there are 40 other states that have this provision in their laws. So I look forward to furthering the discussion with many of the attendees gathered here today about how South Carolina have become the 40, 40, 41st state providing this option for children, youth, and caregivers when the legislature returns in January. This piece of legislation that we're talking about today was endorsed by the Joint Citizens and Legislative Committee on Children and was sponsored by Senator Kachina Sheely. Um, the Joint Citizens and Legislative Committee on Children, Sheely Reibold, and, and they are here today. Um, I'd like to also um, highlight uh, Tamara Scott, who works with DSS and is our Director of Kinship Care and has done a tremendous job in that work. Um, this bill that was sponsored by Senator Sheely, she's a true advocate for children. She, she has ideas and she calls me all the time with those ideas. Um, and we need people like that. We need folks who are, who are pushing the envelope, trying to make sure that our children and our families have what they need in this state. Um, she never backs down from a challenge. And we at DSS are appreciative for all that she does for families in South Carolina. So it's my honor to introduce um, the sponsor of the Kinship Care legislation, Senator Katrina Sheely. Senator Sheely. I'm humbled to be in this room with y'all. I am, because y'all do all the work. You tell me what you need, and like you said, I, I don't stop fighting. I'm not ever gonna stop fighting. I just need to know what you need. And I can figure pretty much part of it out. Uh, I'm a caregiver myself, not for children, but for older an older person, so I know what it takes to be a caregiver. Um, but to see all of your faces, boy, you know, it, I see some of you dabbing your eyes. I'm, I'm wanting to dab mine too. So, um, but thank you. Thank all of y'all for what you do. The people at Halos, the caregivers, the support staff, just, just thank you. As most of you here today understand all too well, kinship care is, is not a new concept. In fact, it's probably the oldest form of child welfare services in the world. Placing at-risk children with loved ones they are both familiar and comfortable with. This new law will help us, help us protect children, getting them to a safe environment, while lessening the trauma that comes with removing a child from the home. This will be done while improving the supports for kinship care families, including a more streamlined, streamlined process, processing, licensing processing, financial support, and the ability to take care of the day-to-day -day needs of a child immediately upon placement. Of course, there is so much more that we can do to build upon the success of strengthening our kinship care families. Because being pro -life, a pro-life state should mean that we provide the best possible environment for all children and families. This means enhancing access to health care, child care, nutrition assistance, early childhood education, expanding child tax credits, stronger child support enforcement, adoption assistance, foster care board rates, family support services, and many, many other just common sense policies. These policies will help reduce the need for foster care and kinship placements in the first place by strengthening families first. I look forward to working with my colleagues in the coming session, and let me tell you, they're going to hear me loud and clear this year, to help ensure that every child and family has a real fighting chance to thrive and grow. I'm now happy to introduce you to the governor of the great state of South Carolina, Henry McMaster, for a few remarks on his transformation, on this transformational legislation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I assure everybody here, hearing from Senator Sheely loud and clear ain't nothing new. <laughs> I'll, I'll be brief. I would say two things. Uh, first, amen to what everybody said. And second, thank you. This is a wonderful state. We've got so much opportunity, so many. It's all because of our great people. The businesses I talk to from around the country and around the world, 
they are, they are thrilled with the mountains and the oceans and the technical schools and all the colleges and everything, but it's always the people. They say it's the people, the people, the people. So that gives us a great opportunity for reasons of our history and our culture, the way we've, where we've all come from at different places, different times, different ways, and we've gone through so, so much together. We have, we have a culture that is a prosperous one loaded with opportunity, and that means that these children that are, that are among us must have the opportunity to go through and learn and prosper. I know that's every parent's goal, every parent's dream, but we know that some families have troubles. Sometimes everybody's not home. Sometimes when those are home, they trouble themselves. They bring it into the house. So that's, that's where you come in. That's where we come in. But the government cannot, cannot do it all. It's not possible. It's, a, it's never going to happen. But the government can help with advice and counsel and understanding of the needs and what will help, which is what you provide, then the government can fill a gap here, fill a gap there, connect some assets together, and make a big difference. I remember that in, in the blink of an eye, your life can change, mine can change, a child's can change. We see people, unfortunately, in car wrecks, all that, just a blink of an eye. They look down at the phone did something to the radio, picked something up, looked at the back seat for a child, something. In the blink of an eye, everything can change. Well, imagine a child's life. That blink of an eye, that can, that can happen 24 hours a day where something, something can happen. So we have, to, we have to stick with those children. We have to see that they have every opportunity I'm reminded of a, a movie some of you may have seen years ago. It starred a man, a man named Jimmy Stewart. The name of the movie was It's a Wonderful Life. It's about Jimmy Stewart. He was, a, he was a banker, and the bank was going broke for various reasons and all that. He just thought the world was at an end, and he was thinking of jumping off the bridge and killing himself. And an angel came down and talked him out of it, and as they walked through the town, they saw how everything had gone to pot. Uh, the, the nice restaurant had turned into a honky-tonk bar where everybody was drinking liquor and all that sort of stuff. Uh, there were hoochie-coochie places all over town. I mean, it had just gone. It was a beautiful little town, and it just gone to pot. And the, and, and the angel said, that's because you were not there. You weren't there to save this, to save that, to do this. And that's where you all come in. That's where you come in. So it is our job in the government to see, to understand the, the needs, to, to understand it's not easy, and to do all we can to help, because we've got to protect these children. Now one of these days, if our economic growth continues, if our technical schools uh, are, is, 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 we know they're the best in the country right now. And by the way, if you know somebody that's looking for a high demand job, if they are, and they want to go to technical college, we got $49 million out there for f scholarships right now. And they can, can go. We got the best technical college system in the whole world. But what we have to do is, is see that, that what we can provide will fill those needs, but it's not, go it's not going to happen without you. It's not going to happen. This is the greatest part. This is where the, this is where the strength is of this whole program. So we all love our children. We all love this state. People all over, I mean, people are just coming from all over to be here for all those reasons. And this state belongs to us. It's just like it's your backyard. Those children, they're just like they're your children. So I think that's the approach we need to take. That's the attitude that we need to have. And with, with our growth and development, when families are all strong and everybody's doing the kind of work they want to do and all of that, then maybe some of these problems will go away. But uh, the good book says the poor are always going to be with us. We know we're going to always have troubles. We know we're going to always have everything's going to always be with us. That's why we got a Bible. But we can do a lot. And so, again, on behalf of me speaking for 5.2 million proud, happy South Carolinians, I want to thank all of you 
for leading this way and making these children's lives better and making our state stronger and showing the world that this is the best place in the world to live, work, and raise a family. So thank you. <laughs> Any questions from the press? Any questions from the press? No questions from the press. Any questions from anybody? If you want to ask Katrina a question, I'm pretty sure she'll answer. Loud and clear. Yes, sir. I see what. Yes, sir. Is this the first time you guys are doing this, or just like you guys have done this before? Yeah. Mike? As far as coming together like this? Yes. So. Well, so, so, so no, we, um, you know, earlier this year, the General Assembly um, did a great thing by helping extend foster care to age 21, um, where we can provide additional supports and, and uh, maximize some additional federal funding so that we can maximize that program, right? So the General Assembly is really hearing the voices of lived experience, whether that be young people or kin, and it's, it's my team's job and uh, to, to make sure that we put something uh, we, we advocate with the General Assembly to, to hopefully pass some of these, some of this legislation that can really make a big difference. But there is more work to be done with kin, kinship. We know that, you know, there are roughly 70,000 kinship caregivers just in South Carolina. Um, not all of those are touching DSS system or other systems, but they all need support, right? And so we have to figure out ways to make sure that we, we wrap around uh, uh, our, our families and kinship caregivers like having things like Halos, which is a great organization that can help a lot of different folks wherever they're at in their, in, with their situation. And we got to work with other organizations Oh, yes. So there are already other organizations across the state that um, we partner with, Kindred Hearts, uh, Pendleton Place in the upstate, Kindred Hearts in, in Midlands, but there's going to be more. And we're excited about that. Um, and, and we're excited about being able to, to roll out some of these additional dollars in other places in the state so we can provide some more support. Any more? Okay, let's sign them up. <laughs>